All right, so welcome. Great to see everyone. Thanks for being here today. And um, if you missed it, if you'd like to share in the chat one thing that's been a resource for you this week, we're uh, leaning in to hearing what has been resourceful during this time for each other. And really um, so grateful to have uh, with us today, once again, Elizabeth Wolf, who is going to be sharing some tools and um, more resources that we can lean into. Welcome, Diana. And uh, so I want to wanna shift, uh, shift into giving her the floor in, in just a, a minute or two after we ground in here. So... Um, let's just all take a moment to let our eyes lower together, beginning to notice the flow of the breath in this moment, wherever you are. What is the natural rhythm of your breath right now? And inviting your breath to become a little bit slower and a little bit deeper. Seeing what it may be like even to count the breath, inhaling for five seconds, exhaling for five seconds, or whatever rhythm is comfortable for you. And as you're doing this, bringing your awareness towards your heart, letting your attention be at your heart and your chest area as the breath slows and deepens. And now moving into activating coherence for those of us who are familiar with that. Making a sincere attempt to activate a regenerative emotion. And you can do this if it's familiar or not. Making a sincere attempt to activate a regenerative emotion such as appreciation or care or someone or something in your life. And just noticing if there's a person or a pet or a special place, one of your resources this week that comes to mind And seeing what it would be like to really invite in the physical sensation of appreciation or care, gratitude for this thing. What does that feel like in your body? Or you can simply invite yourself to experience a sense of calm or peace. Taking just another moment here with awareness at the heart. Building up our resiliency together and expanding awareness outward for a moment to include all your brothers and sisters who are present on this live call here and those who may tune into it later. Just feeling our community, noticing what it's like to be present with everyone else. It's 
seeing if there's any movement from here that would just feel super nourishing to your body. So anyways, following your body's own natural movement, maybe you want to stay still or maybe there's a twist or a wiggle, a shake or a stretch that would feel good. And only when you're ready, allowing your eyes to open once again. Thanks everyone, and once again, welcome. So, I want to give a warm, grateful introduction today. We have the high honor of having Elizabeth Wolf with us, and I want to speak um, for a moment uh, about her work and why it's um, so important, especially in this moment. Um, I was thrilled to find um, someone bridging uh, the intersecting a uh, number of um, lenses slash modalities in the way that Elizabeth does. And um, those include working with the body through somatic experiencing and ancestral perspectives, working with the ancestors and ancestral healing as well as a, a long history, Elizabeth has been working in anti-racism. And so um, I was uh, earlier this year, back in January, able to attend a training here in Northern Michigan put on by uh, Title Trek, an organization that she's a part of, um, that had, it was a weekend long um, training around anti-racism and um, really unpacking whiteness. And um, so I had kind of originally asked her to, to come in to our group to share some of the somatic tools that um, I know she's been bringing forward uh, a lot of focus around that um, during the, the COVID situation and um, offering a Tuesday evening group, practice group around somatic experiencing tools, which I highly recommend, it's amazing. Um, and given, uh, given what's been happening in, in our conversation last week and what's been happening in the world with Black Lives Matter, I kind of invited her to just really trust whatever, whatever was wanting to happen. So I don't know what she's got planned for today. Um, but uh, without um, spending any more time of me talking, I want to wanna just hand it over to you, Elizabeth, with um, so much gratitude for what you're bringing to the world and the ways that you're weaving these really, really important perspectives together. So thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Aria. Thank you so much for the invitation and for your support. Yeah. Hi, everybody. It's good to be with you <laughs> in this wild, wild technology kind of way. Um, so yeah, I um, am, am, I'm kind of attuning to what wants to come through in real time, which is sort of something that, that Aria, I, can't, I think, models <laughs> beautifully and, and is supporting me to do in terms of really trusting uh, my own ancestors and my own like um, wisdom to, to come through. Um, and yeah, there's so much at play right now there's so much afoot as you all know I'm sure and um, I have no idea like where you all are in that and um, I'd just love to hear a little bit from you before we um, really drop in together um, and and just sort of like if you could share like your name and your pronouns and and where you are where you are in the world and then um, kind of what is the mood of your body um, 
you know, in, in relationship to like what's going on in the world and just like how you're feeling today. Um, and if you don't feel like sharing aloud, you can just drop that in the chat. Um, that will just help me to kind of just feel into this collective field a little bit more since I know you all have been co-regulating your nervous systems together. Um, and I'm like dropping in. So uh, if that's okay, I'd just love to like just hear from, from each of you as far as those just kind of basic intro prompts, name, pronouns, where you are in the world and like what is the mood of your body right now? Would you like me to do any timekeeping on that or? Um, no, I think if we just keep it really brief and maybe just do a mutual invitation, that would be good. So just sort of like, yeah, just share, share those pieces and then, and then choose someone else to go. And of course you can pass, but it'll just help us kind of come into a little bit more coherence together with, with me in the mix. <laughs> Does anyone want to start? I don't mind starting. Thanks, Nicole. I'm from, I'm Nicole, I'm from Miami, Florida, um, in the States. And uh, a mood that I'm, my body's in right now, I would say is pretty uh, at peace compared to other days. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I'll pick uh, Samantha. Good morning. Um, I'm Samantha or Sam. Uh, I use she, her pronouns and have a blueberry mouth because I'm drinking my smoothie right now. <laughs> um, I'm coming from Brighton, Michigan, staying with family and the mood of my body is content. I, I listened to Enya last night before I went to bed because I remembered that my child self used to love her and I'd, I'm like swimming in Enya right now. So looping in my head. <laughs> Feeling content at the moment. Um, how about Natalie? Good morning. Uh, my name is Natalie. She, her pronouns. I'm here in Oakland, California. So had a lot going on um, this past week and it's it's been really, I think, energizing for me. Like I'm, I'm excited and I'm focused and I'm really just excited to see, you know, what comes. Um, and I'll hand it over to Diana. Hi, I'm Diana. I'm she, her, and I'm currently visiting family in Las Vegas. And um, my body in this moment is feeling like a mix of activated excitement and grief. And I'm going to nominate Will. I'm Will Michael. I'm in Petoskey, Michigan. Um, he, her pronouns. Uh, I'm feeling relaxed, calm, focused. Um, haven't, um, I usually do a Qigong practice in the morning. I haven't done that yet, so I'm not as tuned in as I usually feel, but I'm um, feeling really good to be here. Uh, let me see, I have the ship. How about, I'll pass it over to Ryan. Hey y'all, I'm Ryan. He, him, Ithaca, New York. And uh, feeling really good today, feeling charged, feeling uh, full of potential and possibility. Had a really good connection yesterday with a uh, a, a very powerful black activist who invited me to help out with some artwork for a project specifically aimed at assisting um, in the activism that's happening right now. So I'm, I'm feeling connected and uh, synchronized like that. 
and um, thank you so much. It's good to be here with you guys. I don't know who to pass it to because I can't see everybody because I'm on an iPhone. Zoom works different. So somebody else just popcorn in, okay? I can hop in. Thank you, Ryan. My name is Aria, um, she, her pronouns, and I am in Bel Air, Michigan, and my body is feeling um, pretty grounded and um, calm right now. And I will choose Paul. Okay. Hi, my name is Paul. I'm from um, Taskey, Michigan. And I, I have uh, a lot of different emotions. I'm excited and I'm grieving just with the stuff that's going on in the world. And, um, you know, oh, there's a lot of really disturbing stuff. And at the same time, I'm excited about just all the the summer, the leaves are out, it's beautiful weather. I feel uh, very grounded. Um, I have the freedom where it's very easy for me to do that. So um, that's about all I have on that. Thanks, Tom. Ariana, do you wanna go? Sure. I um Ariana, she her Santa Barbara, California. I feel peace in my body. Um, I wrote in the chat I'm sensing a lot of what's mine to do and what's not because in the past boundaries have been a huge issue. And I'm actually feeling a lot of gratitude because I was highly involved in Black Lives Matter in 2015 and 16. And even though there were tremendous atrocities committed, there was nowhere near this kind of um public outrage. So I'm feeling that the collective is really waking up from um, that sleep and dealing with the shadow. Thank you. And then I think we just have our friend on the phone. Is that right? Yeah, I'm going to unmute the 2014 number. Oh, you did it. I already, I, it's a she. It's a she can. This is Penny. Um, who has not been present much, so <laughs> I've been listening in. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, good to, good to hear you, Penny. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, I'll uh, make an explanation and apology to the whole group that I've not connected with you in real time because it conflicts with my work, which I wish I had thought about a little bit more before I signed up, but I'm here. Um, and I'm happy to be here with y'all. In my body, I'm feeling a few aches and pains from the type of work I do. But other than that, my feeling today and this week after feeling very sad and grieving last week is uh, I'm back in the faith and the hope place again. And uh, probably helps that I'm in a garden right now talking to y'all. Thank you, Penny. I'm not sure how to unmute. Uh, star six again should do it. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. I'll share it too. Um, I, I go by Elizabeth and my, I use she or they pronouns and um, I'm here in Traverse City, Michigan, um, on Anishinaabe land. And, um, yeah, I can relate to several of you who shared this kind of combination of like excited and grief at the same time. Um, that's kind of, that's the mood of my body too right now. Um, so yeah, thank you all for sharing. That helps me just kind of, like I said, attune to you all. And I know you all have been journeying together. So thanks for welcoming me into the fold today. Um, so I thought um, what, what was actually coming through this morning as I was working in the garden with Penny actually <laughs> before this call um, is, is um, like as I was yeah listening in for, for what 
maybe would be the most helpful use of this time together in addition to talking a little bit about my work and um, these intersections of somatic, ancestral, and cultural healing that um, Aria mentioned. Um, I thought it would be good to, to do some, some resourcing specifically around supporting the body to, um, have to supporting grief to move through the body. Like not in an overwhelming way, but in a, in a way that is actually contained and supported. Um, because the, the thing about grief, right, is that it, it basically, it's like a river. The way that I experience grief is like a river and, and all grief is kind of connected. And so when, when there's a loss or when big losses are brought to our attention, whether or not we were feeling them acutely or not, like it's almost like there's this ripple effect and, and, it, and it drops us into this, this big river of all grief that's interconnected. Um, and I'll just share that my mom, my mother um, transitioned to ancestorhood um, in October. So like, I don't know, seven or eight months ago. And so I've really been a student of grief. Um, and I know I'm not alone in that. Um, and so um, I've really been feeling this similar to how Ariana was sharing that like this moment feels different and like this sort of uprising uh, around Black Lives Matter, um, you know, feels bigger and more like transformative. There's, there, there's more momentum and there's, there's more people waking up. And one of the things that I'm personally feeling and maybe some of you can relate to this is because of the grief work that I've been doing around losing my mother um, and all of the other work that I've been doing and been up to over the last decade, two decades um, around social justice work and like, you know, waking up as a white person to the reality of our society and how um, unwell it is, um, that, that, that all of that is contributing to me feeling grief more fully in real time with what's happening right now. So like when George Floyd was lynched, like as a white person, I felt that more than I have ever felt about any loss of life uh, of any kind uh, in, in my entire life. And um, so I, you know, we all have different social locations in terms of identi our identities on this call. And I don't, I certainly don't wanna like center whiteness um, I'm just sharing from my own perspective and my own experience. Um, and I know that like grief is something that needs support. And um, I'm, I, I think, you know, as a, as a culture, like in our, our sort of over culture, if you will, we're not taught how to, to deal with grief in, in ways that our ancestors knew how to, right? Like a lot of cultural practices um, have been stripped away uh, especially for white folks um, in the name of kind of assimilating into this this culture of white supremacy that is really um, not a culture I mean it's a culture but it's not a life-giving culture it's not an earth-based culture capitalism is not um, you know sustainable and it's not a, a culture that is regenerative and so I would like to just offer a little bit of resourcing around grief um, whatever you're feeling in terms of like in relationship to grief and what's going on um yeah, like it's okay whatever you're feeling and sometimes like you know we feel numb you know in relationship to grief or sometimes we feel angry and that's you know righteous anger but there's grief underneath it that also needs to be witnessed and needs to be supported um or sometimes we just feel really good and we feel joyful and and that's okay too because um what i'm learning about grief is that the more i feel grief and sorrow the more capacity I have in my nervous system to also feel joy and pleasure, right? And so they're not mutually exclusive and they can coexist at the same time. They're almost like two sides of the same coin. And so the veil is very thin between them. <laughs> and so like, there's no shame, um, I don't think about feeling, um, well, anything, like we wanna just feel, <laughs> feel all the things and not have shame about them. But there's, there's no, um, like need to pathologize ourselves or think that there's something wrong with us. Like if we're feeling good, because in some ways like feeling good 
is the result of, um, like if we're honestly feeling good, it's like the result of capacity to feel good. And there might be privilege in that, right? Like there may be very real privilege in, your, in our ability to feel good and to have the resources to be able to do that and like less stress than many people are facing, less trauma perhaps in some cases. Um, but that like feeling good is our natural state, you know, as, as well as feeling grief, like the ability to sort of flow in and out of grief and joy states is the goal, <laughs> right? And I don't know if anyone on this call has, has read um, Emergent Strategy. I know um, Aria has probably mentioned that work of Adrian Marie Brown. And she also has a book called um, Pleasure Activism. And, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of white people ask her, like, well, is it okay for white people to feel, feel pleasure? Like, <laughs> you know, like we're, you know, we're caught up in this whole system and, and, and we have all this privilege. And, and basically what she says is like, as long as you're showing up for the work and doing the work, like, yes, <laughs> we like privilege is real and like pleasure, intentional and mindful pleasure in service to resilience is important. And so I just want to name that before we drop in with grief, because I don't want it to feel like grief is all there is, right? Or I don't want, I don't want us to feel like, oh no, like I don't, I don't have the capacity to feel the grief. It's like, we're just going to touch in with whatever we feel the capacity in our system to touch into, knowing that that is in service to them also having more space in our bodies to feel good and to resource ourselves. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So one of the things I've been really use, using a lot lately, <laughs> thanks, um, using a lot lately with my clients and with my, my Tuesday night group um, that Aria mentioned, which is um, somatic practice for embodied resilience. Um, and that's now going to shift into like a very explicit, like embodied anti-racism um, type intention. But one of the things I've been using is the self-holds um, that are part of the sort of somatic practice world and so if you're interested in and in, in willing and if your body feels okay with it I invite you to just try to place a hand on your heart and just notice how that feels and I also I always encourage folks to practice radical consent with your own body which means always listening for yes no or maybe with your own body and so um, like I'm getting a yes that my heart is my chest is really grateful and glad that my hand is there if you're getting any kind of other message or feedback from your body that like maybe your, your body's not sure if it likes that, you know, or if it's like, no, I don't like that, then just respond accordingly, you know? And it's like, it's totally optional. Everything is, is invitational in, you know, in the somatic field, if it's being done in a, in a truly trauma-informed uh, and liberatory way. So, for me, I don't know about you, but when I put my hand on my heart, I, I start to feel a little bit more support. I, I start to feel a little bit more like containment, right? If you think of a baby, and we all have like these bodies that started out as little tiny baby bodies, right? Um, but the body is, is similar to the, like the, the baby body. Like in some ways, like we theoretically mature in our psyches, <laughs> right? In our psychology. But our body is still this like very tender, sensitive body that in some ways like needs very similar attention and, and care, just like a little baby does. <laughs> and so, and especially during this time of quarantine, uh, where many of us may not be receiving the kind of physical affection or physical touch that we may need or want. Some of us may be glad that there's like less of that but others of us may be feeling like some kind of deprivation. And so even though it's not the same, it's equally, I think, powerful to place our own hands on our body and provide this, this sense of, of containment and like witnessing. And I love this, um, this idea of feeling the energy of an old oak tree in the hand so that like, you know, we're not placing a hand on the chest like to do anything. We're not, we don't have an agenda. We're not trying to impose anything. Cause obviously the hands can be sources of lots of different kinds of energy. And in the case of self touch, um, we really just want to, um, 
engender a sense of of, um, of benevolence and of of just sort of neutral support, just like an old oak tree. And even if you don't have your hand on your chest, you know, just just bringing some attention with your awareness to your heart center, and that's a form of touch too. So it doesn't have to just be physical touch. Our awareness and our attention is also a form of touch. And so in, in either case, whether or not you have one hand or no hands or both hands on your heart, just noticing like, is there anything energetically or physically that you feel like is shifting in your heart space? And particularly just noticing like, is there grief that is feeling a little bit more supported to move? Almost like, you know, like kind of undamming a river um, and letting the water flow a little bit more so that it's not getting stuck and accumulating and being kind of backed up. And so often I feel like there's like this backlog of grief that accumulates in my body because I'm still working on like decolonizing grief rituals and, and grief practices um, that allow me to, you know, have that energy, allow that energy to move. And so if this, you know, if this is not, if you're not feeling grief in your heart, of course, that's absolutely welcome. And, and that's your own reality. And so just being present with whatever is there for you, um, whether that's a sense of just kind of neutrality and openness or, or whether there's a sense of like constriction or contraction there and just honoring whatever is happening from a place of, of kind of curiosity and compassion. Um, one of my somatic coaches says that a curious body is a low regulated body. And I just love that because, um, yeah, there's so much possible from that place of curiosity and, and yet curiosity is a hard thing to feel sometimes <laughs> because of trauma, right? And because of so many ways that our bodies try to protect us and um, the way that the nervous system works is that, um, you know, we're really good at attuning to threat and attuning to danger. And so, um, yeah, we want to honor that and we want to like, appreciate the body as it tries to make sense of our environment and it tries to negotiate stimulation and all of the environmental um you know factors around us in in this culture that again doesn't you know doesn't doesn't really support the body <laughs> and doesn't support um our our sort of holistic beings around around grief and around like feeling our feelings in real time and feeling into our bodies and not just, you know, being stuck in our heads and being in this more intellectual or rational space. And just noticing what it's like to like, to tune in on this more subtle level. Like it doesn't necessarily feel like we're doing anything. I think some, sometimes somatic practice can, can, people can think of somatic practice as like, something that's very specific, like a practice like Aikido or Tai Chi or, um, you know, some kind of movement practice. And that's definitely part of it. But there's also this way in which just pausing and slowing down around sensation is, um, I like to think of it as like a radical and countercultural act of resistance to systemic oppression. Because the systemic oppression requires disembodiment right and it causes fight flight freeze understandably and we often get stuck in that and again it's brilliant the ways that we can shape shift and be like you know dissociate and 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 fight back and and go into a freeze like all of these survival strategies are very very brilliant and magical and i think it's super powerful to <laughs> to like basically you know come back to the body like again as an act of resistance um and it's easier said than done right like again it's it's not like oh we can just snap our fingers and come back into the body and so it's just these little like practices of of tuning in and saying oh hi body i see you i feel you i know that you're real or maybe if i can't even feel the body or all parts of the body, I can still like 
acknowledge that I have a body, yeah? And so some other ways that we can support the body to, um, to feel, to, to, well, to support ourselves to feel our bodies and to actually be like connected to a felt sense in the body is to actually just touch our own bones. And so, you know, if your hand is on your heart, you might just really feel into the fact that you have this clavicle here, you have the sternum, you can maybe feel some ribs. And, and if you want, you can just start to explore without moving your hand too quickly. Just start, start to explore um, some of your other like bones that you can actually feel in your body. And, and it's not to, we're not pivoting to a, you know, a completely different state of consciousness. We're just expanding our awareness from the heart and allowing grief to continue to flow if that's happening for you and just expanding your awareness to include the other parts of your body, like the fact that you have not only this kind of river of emotion and grief flowing, but you also have this very physical, dense skeletal structure that gives you your like internal scaffolding. And everything around your skeleton is, you know, like gives you your shape and is like the way that we move through the world, our musculature. And so just like feeling into the, the bones of your body as this really fundamental structure that everything else is kind of um, organized around. And so feeling into your elbows or your shoulders, it can be nice to feel your shoulders while you give yourself a hug <laughs> that can actually provide some containment. Um, and so just noticing how that feels, like you can feel into the bones of your shoulders as you also maybe feel a little bit more sense of safety and containment with the arms in this position. And you can squeeze the bones a little bit. You don't want to do that too hard, of course. So it's like maintaining just a sort of a curiosity and a compassionate witness energy in the hands. And maybe feeling into your, you know, your knees and your ankles. And, and just take a moment to like expand your awareness to like, you know, whatever other part of your body feels like it could use some attention. Noticing how your chest feels and maybe you want to just keep your energy or your awareness there on the chest. Or maybe you feel like there's some um, sensation in your belly that wants some attention or in your legs. And so for just a few moments here, we're gonna do an, a practice that's called blending, where we're just gonna blend with sensation. And when I say blend, I don't mean like actually, um, you know, blend with it. It's more of like blending uh, as a way of, of welcoming it. And as opposed to like, um, you know, resisting it or being in opposition from it. So just tuning into your own body and noticing if there's a place where you feel some kind of something. Like it could be positive sensation. It could be like a sense of neutrality. It could be, um, you know, activation. Like maybe what I'm facilitating is challenging for you today and it's like not meeting you well, like whatever you're experiencing is okay. And maybe, you know, this is welcome. Like maybe your body is really liking this slowing down. And so just maybe, you know, choosing one part of your body where you feel some kind of sensation. It doesn't have to be negative. It doesn't have to be uncomfortable, but just choosing one part of your body that feels kind of manageable to be present to be present with and we're just going to kind of hang out with that sensation a little bit whether it's got emotion attached to it or if there's like imagery that's coming up whatever it is just being with it and you can include some of the self-hold um, self-hold work which can include the hand on the heart again if that's helpful you can also place a hand at the back of the head which is another great hold it can be helpful to place a hand on the, the area of the body that you're feeling sensation that you're wanting to work with the belly or the forehead 
You can also place the left hand on the left side of the, of the face, especially if you've been feeling a lot of activation in your nervous system from everything that's going on. And this actually helps to tone and support the vagus nerve, which innervates the left side of the head and the vagus nerve is responsible for kind of down regulating the nervous system into a more calm, steady place. And so maybe the hands are just offering again a little bit of support and containment. Noticing if that allows you to stay with the sensation in your body a little bit more. And if it's challenging, if the mind is wandering and if you feel kind of like disconnected from the body, that's okay too. Like just again, welcoming and befriending whatever your experience is in this moment and giving yourself permission to just receive your own curious and compassionate witness. And once you kind of hone in on a part of the body that is feeling some kind of sensation, whether it's the belly or the chest or your leg, or maybe you just want to choose something super neutral like your feet or your toes or your hands. Maybe not neutral if you're experiencing acute pain in any of those parts of the body, but you can just choose a place that feels, again, manageable to hang out with. And then see if you can just stay with it a little bit, a little bit more. And it's just sort of like we're holding space for, for a sensation. We're holding space for the body without any agenda, without having to fix it or make it go away. It's almost like I, I get this visual or this, this felt sense of like sitting down next to a friend on a park bench and just listening and holding space. And I'm sure all of us are really good at doing that, of holding space for people in our lives who we care about. And so, It's like we're just holding space in that same way for our own bodies. And, and doing that in, in service to our resilience and in service to our ability to be able to show up in courageous ways in the world. It has to start with this befriending of our own bodies and then it ripples out from there when we're in right relationship with our own bodies, it's, it's a lot easier to then be in right relationship with other people's bodies and with the body that is the earth. So just noticing the different characteristics or qualities or attributes of the sensation that you're feeling, if there's a color associated with it, or if there's a texture or a temperature. And noticing if it's changing, if there's any kind of directionality to it. And just, again, noticing, like without any kind of need to anal analyze or judge, just noticing what's happening. And then when you're ready, just kind of beginning to kind of press the pause button, just kind of telling the body, whatever you're experiencing, that you'll be back. <laughs> and, and that we're gonna start to shift our awareness a little bit more outwardly or externally after this internal work. And so just kind of when you're ready on your own time, shifting your awareness a little bit more outward to kind of like the outermost periphery of your body, like your, your sense of touch, your skin, and just noticing if there's anything that you're aware of through your sense of touch that is landing for you as neutral or maybe even better than neutral, maybe even pleasant. just kind of noticing your, your other senses, your sense of hearing, your sense of smell, your sense of taste. Noticing if there are any 
any experiences through those senses that are feeling resourcing and supportive to you right now? And when you're ready, you can, if your eyes have been closed, you can go ahead and take your palms together. You can do this even if your eyes haven't been closed, but you can take your palms together and just kind of rub them together to create some friction and some heat. And then when you're ready, you can cup the palms over the eyes and just let that warmth and energy soak into the eyes and into the frontal brain behind the eyes. and opening the eyes into the palms, letting a little bit of light back in, and allowing the eyes to start to adjust back to the light if your eyes have been closed, and just allowing yourself to slowly start to orient visually or reorient visually to your space, to your environment. And just kind of looking around, turning the, the neck side to side, and noticing one or two things in your physical environment that are feeling resonant for you, whether it's a plant or a color or a quality of light, and just attuning to that in, in your environment. Maybe it's an object or, or a piece of artwork And it can be really helpful and regulatory for the nervous system to actually not only turn the neck when we're orienting to our environments, but also turn the hips. So if you are able to see if you can actually like twist around and kind of swivel your, uh, from your hips and from your neck so that you're looking all the way back behind you, even if you know what's behind you. It's actually just sort of regulating for the body um, it makes sense if you think about it, right? Because it's like an animals are always orienting in 360 degrees. Like they don't sit and look at a screen for <laughs> hours at a time. And so our own bodies, our own animal bodies really appreciate these little ways that we can like remember, remember how to be an animal, remember how to orient in, in, in 360 degrees um, and, and come back into that more instinctual and intuitive way of, of moving through the world. So I'm aware that we have like about seven minutes or am I taking the whole hour, Aria? Or am I supposed to be done by now? <laughs> <laughs> You're great. I just need like a minute or two to close. Okay, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so I just wanted to share a little bit. I know I've been sort of um, talking a lot. It hasn't been as much facilitating of, of your voices. So. Um, Apologize for that if, if there are things that you feel like wanted to be said today, but I hope that this was integrative and supportive to um, your bodies and to like just, you know, be, being resourced at this time. Um, just a little like contextualizing like the work that we just did. Um, I am really a student of this, this body of work called cultural somatics, or it's also being called uh, somatic abolitionism or embodied anti-racism and um, this is primarily being led by two people Resma Menachem who is the author of My Grandmother's Hands if you've heard of him has anyone heard of his work yet Sam and Arya cool so I would highly recommend checking out um, his work um, Arya would you be willing to put his website just resma r e s m a a dot com in the in the chat thank you um, he has a free um, like six part course it's just short fifteen minute videos that just kind of orients to this work and his book is really amazing and um, the other person that's doing cultural somatics, like thought leadership, is um, Tada Hazumi, who also has a website called uh, selfishactivist.com. And what this work is really about is like resourcing our nervous systems um, in service to, again, being able to show up for the work that's upon us and the work that's ahead of like radically transforming the way that we relate to our bodies and to each other and to the planet. And one of the things that's so awesome about this work and that has been so healing for me is that I used to be, um, you know, somebody that 
like unconsciously was kind of playing out this like martyrdom thing of like, oh, because I have privilege or because like my suffering or my trauma isn't as bad as like all these other people, then like I need to sublimate my body and I need to sublimate my needs and I need to um, basically sacrifice myself in service to the movement for, for social justice and, and collective liberation. And now what I know that is true and what I try to embody is that that's like a form of nihilism and like a form of, of like internalized depression. Um, and I, and, and guilt, like white guilt and white shame, right, too. And which is like just like a lot of distortion and shadow energy that's like unexamined. So what I encourage you all to feel into and, and reach out if you want further support with this is to think of nervous system regulation and self-compassion like and compassion for your body as a form of resistance and as a tool for interrupting um, like systems of oppression. So it can seem again kind of counterintuitive like oh why would I like I need to be like out protesting and organizing. It's like, yes, but we're not gonna be able to show up in the different ways that we are wanting to if we're coming from a place of guilt and shame or of internalized oppression. Um, does that make sense? So it's like, so Tata talks about it like self-compassion as self-defense. Um, because if we're not coming from a place of self-compassion, that's when like white fragility for white folks shows up or um, you know, collapsing into a trauma response is, is going to happen because we're going to get triggered. Like there's so much happening um, that is triggering right now for so many of us for so many reasons because we all have attachment wounding, we all have trauma histories, we have ancestral trauma, right? And so um, just, a, just kind of a, a blessing and an invitation to, to this beautiful group to really to orient to self-compassion and, and nervous system practices and resilience like as... At, like in service to liberation um and maybe that's already like kind of where you're oriented but just an extra layer of encouragement and um support uh in in the spirit of of radical radical self-love and 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 then radical love of like all all living beings so hopefully that um is supportive and resonant and uh yeah, feel free to reach out. I think Aria just put my website in the chat. Um, Elizabethwolf.love is my current website. And this is specifically the link for my somatic practice that happens on Tuesday night. So tonight, 530 to 7. And it's, um, it's uh, yeah, it's a really beautiful community that gathers to resource ourselves in similar ways to what we did today. So I welcome you to join. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Wow. Um, so, so grateful once again for what you're bringing through in this way. And um, I, I will send these resources out by email as well, these websites. I really invite if this was helpful for, for you to just do a couple of these little holds. And um, the Tuesday night group is, is incredible space feel free to share that um, with with friends and family as well these tools i think are just some of the most valuable that we can have during this time during any time but especially right now as we're as we're connecting into how we can show up in the world in our leadership for change for peace for love in the world. So um, yeah, thank you again so much for sharing. Elizabeth also offers um, leadership coaching as well and, and other um, resources for organizations. So if you're part of an organization or you're curious about one-on-one -on -one work with her, um, definitely uh, welcome you to explore that also. And um, yeah, thank you again so much for, for your time today with sharing these, these amazing, amazing tools and resources. Let's, let's uh, uh, send, send Elizabeth some love. You can just receive this, sister. You can just sit back and anyone who wants to <laughs> shine some, some love, some resources, some energy. Thank you so much. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> Feels good. Thanks, everybody. Hey, awesome. <laughs> so I'll see you all next week. Have a have a blessed week until then. Thank you. Big love. <laughs>